Hold up, I am on my way. I'm in motion. Let's go to the ocean. Yeah, let's go outside. We can hang out on the beach without freezing. Yeah, isn't that amazing? In Christmas times, we'll be chilling and having a good, good time. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I just got done filming my weekly check in for week three of October. Today is October 9th, um, and I am going to sit down now and do my paycheck to paycheck budget check-in as well as fill my cash envelopes and my sinking funds so if that sounds like something you guys are interested in please stay tuned okay and I totally just realized that I said today is October 9th and it is definitely not it is the 16th so you probably caught that already but the 16th not the 9th so what I need to do first is go through and figure out what my income was for the week my expenses my cash envelopes my sinking funds and then break my paycheck down so I can figure out what I have remaining, what dollar amounts are going to what category, um, and then we'll be able to allocate money to um, cash envelopes and to sinking funds and go ahead and get those stuff for the week. So we will go ahead and get started. So the first thing is income. Um, we obviously have to figure out what the income is so we know how much money we have to work with for the other categories that we need. So just like always, I got paid from my regular um, full-time job, and that came through today, which is the 16th, and that amount was $520. And then my part-time job also came through today. And that one was $232. So that is going to give us a total of $752 to work with for the week um, for income. Now, you probably noticed that I don't have online income listed from here, um, which includes YouTube, uh, my website, morijune.com, with the sticker sales or anything like that. And that's because I like to plan out my budget for the week um, using only my fixed income sources, and that is these two. Um, if you notice in my... Let me back up here. In my monthly budget spread, I do um, budget for online income as well as my part time, my full time, and my part time job. But when I'm working with my weekly paychecks, um, I only like to use these two categories because they're fixed, whereas the online income is highly variable. Uh, so I want to know that I'm able to pay for my expenses, my cash envelopes, my sinking funds, all of my expense type uh, bills with my fixed income in case something changes on the online end of it. And then the online stuff I use for savings, debt snowball, stuff like that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started here with expenses. And we're going to start with my Capital One uh, card payment, which is $38.40, and that actually consists of two different Capital One credit cards. Um, next is PayPal, and that one for the week is 7 so um, my minimum payment is $28 a month, but what I do is I take that minimum payment of all of my bills, I divide it by how many paychecks I will have in that month, and that is the amount that I pay every single week. That way I'm not taking out the full amount um, in one paycheck. Obviously with something like $7, it doesn't make a huge difference to take that all out in one check. But when you have something like my car, that is $153 a weekly amount, um, the monthly amount is $612, and that would be a lot to take out in just one paycheck. So this just makes it a little easier. Um, next I have rent, which is $200, or sorry, $50 for the week, um, $200 for the month. I live 
Uh, my family owns the house that I live in, so they are generous enough to let us stay here and we pay $200 a month. So um, I'm very fortunate for that. I know a lot of people don't have that opportunity, so that's why my rent is so low. Uh, next is my daughter's tumbling. And the weekly amount for that is $16.25. And then we have Hulu, which is um, the only TV service that we have. And that's $14.75. And then Verizon for cell phones is $36.25 for the week. Um, I have three cell phones. I have mine and then my son's. And then I also have another cell phone that... I kind of labeled as the kids phone. Um, I have three kids total, so the two younger ones, I don't feel that they're old enough to have a phone yet, um, but if they go, like when my daughter goes to tumbling, I'll send it with her just in case something happens and she needs to call me. Um, like Friday, I dropped her off because she has practice Wednesdays and Fridays, so last Friday I dropped her off and they were supposed to have practice from 4.30 to 6. I got all the way home, which I live 15 miles from where her dance studio is. I got all the way home and she called and said that she had been waiting, but nobody was there. So come to find out, they went on vacation and forgot to tell the parents that they weren't having practice. So that was a little irritating, um, but something like that, I mean, had I not had she not had the phone with her, I have no idea what she would have done because I don't think they actually have a phone there. Um, so, uh, crazy. And they left the door unlocked, so, uh, whatever. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get these amounts totaled up. And sorry, you can see the light bulbs in the um, phone. Sorry about that. But it's really dark in the room that I use to film even during the daytime, so I have to use a ton of studio lighting. Okay, so we have $315.65 for, um, I was seeing what the difference was from last week, so $315.65 for our expenses total. Next I'm going to go down to cash envelopes. I have three cash envelopes. I am going to add in a fourth one though. Um, so right now I have gas, spending, and groceries. These just go in my wallet um, and then all my sinking funds are in a binder. I'm going to add one though. I don't know what I'm going to label it exactly but the idea of it is if I have, so I, I don't take my sinking fund binder with me everywhere I go. I leave that at home, obviously, because there's a lot of money in it. Um, and, you know, if I'm just casually out and maybe I see something spur of the moment for Christmas or in a different category of sinking fund that I have that I would like to buy, but I don't have my um, sinking fund binder with me, then I want to be able to swipe my debit card, but then have an envelope maybe put like swipe for cash or something like that to where when I get home I will take the money from whatever sinking fund it was supposed to go for. I'll take that money out of here, put it in that specific envelope, the swipe for cash envelope, and then I will maybe at the end of the week take that money and deposit it back into my checking account. Um, I, something like that. I don't know maybe if you guys do something similar to that, how exactly you do it, but I definitely want to do that because I do find that there are times that I stop somewhere and I see something that I want to buy, but the money would normally come from my sinking funds, but then I have a habit of running my debit card and then I don't ever take the money back out of here to replenish it. So I thought maybe if I had an actual cash envelope, um designated for that cash, maybe it would prompt me to get that money deposited back into my account. So that's what I'm thinking about doing. Anywho, I have these three cash envelopes. Uh, groceries, I do $80 every week. 
and then spending I do 40 like spending is a huge one um, I like to I'm I'm recently getting into um, planning like daily planning and whatnot and I have actually ordered a um, A6 planner which I'm really excited to get I used some money that I had um, in a gift card that I got from work and I want to get some inserts for it from Etsy but I take my spending money out in cash so that would be a perfect example of you know when I use PayPal to pay for that which comes from my checking account and then I take the money from here put it in a swipe for cash envelope and then I can replenish my checking account for that so that would be a good example of that um, and then next is gas which I do $45 a week so that is going to be hundred and sixty five dollars in cash for my cash envelopes for the week um, and then next we have sinking funds so sinking funds are um, the last category that I have for expense type things and they're my favorite one to do um, so first we'll start with school tuition and this is for tuition for next year um, as they're already in school and I have already paid for this year's tuition so that will be ten dollars um, then we have back to school and that one is twenty when you have three kids the amount of money that you spend on back to school shopping is absolutely insane um, so that's why I am starting to save now and I'm putting away quite a big amount of money every week compared to my other categories um, but it's just it's crazy how much they need you know not only for their clothes shoes and backpacks but also all the school supplies that are required um, it's a lot so which I don't mind doing it at all but it's just nice to be able to save ahead of time to prepare for that huge expense um, car insurance is 35 car maintenance is 10 um, I've already paid my six months for my car insurance so that $35 a week right now is going towards my six month premium which will be due in January um, and then this week will or this um, weekly amount will be able to go down I'll have to figure it out um, but it'll go down quite a bit I think it'll take me down to like ten dollars or so a week after December um, Christmas is a hundred and then vacation is twenty and then next we have these are my newer um, sinking funds I have household I can't wait till this one gets a little higher then I can go to Sam's Club it is one of my favorite places to go to get like paper goods toilet paper paper plates paper towels um, and get laundry soap just anything bulk um, we go there for the closest one is about an hour and a half away um, so I, I usually go maybe three or four times a year uh, next is kids this envelope I use for anything kid related if they uh, like school pictures um, yearly school pictures if they need new snow boots or a new pair of shoes or anything like that uh, then we have personal care this one we use for haircuts and to get my eyebrows wax which I need to do so incredibly bad I have really really dark eyebrows and really thick hair and they grow so fast so they're beginning to look like caterpillars um, and then the last one is medical and that one is five dollars 
And also, I want to tell you guys, I get, my number one request that I have is obviously to do a face-to-face -face video. Um, and I want to let you guys know that I am going to be doing that. I don't know exactly when. It will be sometime in the near future. Um when I actually have time to get myself ready to be presentable on camera. Um, you don't really have to do much to your hair or face when you're looking at this view here. So um, it will be soon. I just don't know when, but I just want to let you guys know that that is coming um, after a long, long time and a lot of requests. So I know you guys will be excited for that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add up all of these sinking fund amounts. So we have 10, 20, 35, 10, 100, 20, 15, 20, 5, and 5. So $240. So that is our sinking fund total for the week. So now we're going to break down my paycheck down below here. So we have income, expenses, cash envelopes, and sinking funds. Okay, so for uh, income, we had $752 even. And now expenses were three hundred fifteen and sixty-five cents. Cash envelopes were one sixty-five, and sinking funds were two forty. So what I will do is I'm going to add up the three expense categories. And that is seven twenty sixty five. So that means we have thirty one dollars and thirty five cents left for the week. Now, if um, if I for some reason did not have enough money in my income to cover all of these, I can do one of two things. I can either then take some money out of my checking account cushion that I have, um, or out of some of the online income that I get. I could do either one of those, or I can not fund a portion of my sinking funds for that week. So, you know, some of the ones that I don't have to fund, there's not, you know, an end goal or anything, vacation, household, kids, personal care, um, back to school. Those are the categories that I could go without funding for a week and it's not going to hurt me. All the other ones, I have calculated it to where I have to do this amount every single week to be able to meet that goal once it's due. So that's what I do there. So now that I got the paycheck to paycheck budget done, I am going to go ahead and set out my cash um, so we can get our cash envelopes and our sinking fund stuffed. So I'm first going to start off with my cash envelopes. We will go ahead and start with spending. Um, so spending has $4 left over. Um, I'm just gonna put them, I'll put that right there to the side for now. And spending gets $40 for the week. So we'll go ahead and put that in there and set that one aside. Next is gas. Gas has a lonely $1 in it, so I'll add that there. Gas gets $45. So we'll add that one in there for the upcoming week. And then groceries is next. Um, groceries has $10, so we'll set that aside, and grocery gets $80. So 20, 40, 60, 80. And we'll set that aside for the week. Um, so now, the remainder, so we're going to go ahead now and start filling my um, sinking funds, hold on a second here, okay, 
everything organized. There we go. All right, so um, we will start with car maintenance. Last week, car maintenance had 150. So we have 20, 40, 60, 80, 90, 1, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150. We are adding in 10 for car maintenance. And that will put this envelope for the week at 160. Um, so I'm going to take my Erin Condren wet erase marker. It has a nice fine tip on the end. Um, today is the 16th. We're adding in 10, which puts our total at 160. <clears throat> now I do sell these cash envelopes in my shop, which is morijune.com. Um, it'll come with the laminated cash envelope. You could get it hole punched or just like these to fit in a wallet. Um, they all come with a tracker on the back and then a blank envelopes for you to write in your category with a marker. Next is car insurance. Last week we were at 210. So 20, 40, 60, 81, 120, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 85, 90, 95, 2, 2, 5, 2, 10. We're adding in 35. So that should be 245. So we'll get that put back in there. So again, I just like to write the date and I do this <clears throat> whether I um, am putting money in or taking money out. That way I know right away what is in there and I don't have to count every time I want to know. Um, next is Christmas. Last week it was at 600. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 20, 40, 60, 86. We're going to add in another 100, which will make Christmas at 700 for the week. So 700. Uh, we're not funding that one right now. Not gifts. So next is household. That one was at 30. This was one that I said I had just started funding at uh, the beginning of October. So we'll go ahead and add in another 15 to this one, which will put it at 45. This is the one that I like to go to Sam's Club with. Um, so I will probably schedule that trip once it gets a little fuller. You uh, won't be able to get by with much with $45 at Sam's Club. <laughs> um, next is kids. It was at 40 dollars last week. We're adding in another 20 which will put it at 60. So we have 10, 16. This is another one that I just started funding the beginning of October. Uh, medical, same with that one. We were at 10 last week. We'll add in another 5 which will go to um, 15. And I like to use that one for co-pays or if we have to get a prescription for something, anything like that. Um, back to school was at 120. 20, 40, 60, 81, 120. We'll add another 20. That one will be at 140. And by next August, when we do our back to school shopping, I will be extremely prepared. This is the first year that I have, or first time that I've ever done a back to school um, sinking fund, so I'm really excited about that. Personal care last week was at 10, and I do $5 every week for this one, so that I'll put it at 15. I used to do, I think, 10 or $15, um, but the boys don't get their hair too often, maybe once every like six weeks or so. And that is, let's see, it's $15 a piece for them to get their hair cut without tax, or sorry, without a tip. And then my eyebrows are like $8 and I do it about, well, I should do it like once a month, but I procrastinate and probably do it like once every six to eight weeks. And then they end up looking like caterpillars, which whatever, so be it. Not 
putting rent in cash, not doing savings in cash. School tuition was at 60 last week. 10, 20, 30, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. So we will do another 10. So that one will be at 70. Adding in 10, so 70. And then last is vacation. Last week was at 120. 20, 40, 60, 81, 15, 110, 120. Get that in there. So vacation will be at 140. And then the last thing that I like to do is that money right here that was the extra that came from my three cash envelopes. I like to take that and put it into this debt snowball envelope. So last week I was at $28. Um, so we have 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. How is that not right? 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Well, I must have miscounted last week. Anyways, so I am going to add in this 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 dollars here um, that I have from my cash envelopes from this week. I'm going to add that in. And what I do with this is at the end of the month, I take all of that overage from my cash envelopes, I put them in here, and then I put that towards my debt snowball payment. So I'm just going to get these added in here, recount it, and that will just be what my total is going forward. So 10, 15, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. So $40 is what I have in here, and we still have two more paychecks um, worth of overage to put in here. So I will take whatever is in here at the end of October and put it in my account to go towards a debt snowball, and then this envelope will start with $0 at the beginning of every month. So that is it for my cash envelope stuffing. Um, again, I sell these cash envelopes in my, um, or on my website, as well as these binders. I have the binders in five different um, designs. They are an A5 binder, and then the cash envelopes you can get with the hole punch to fit in an A5 binder, or you can get them non-hole punched, and they all come with the laminated trackers on the back as well. I have those in my shop, as well as all of the stickers. Um, that you guys saw here and in my um, budget planner. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!